Shalom, everyone. As we have these last weeks, we remind ourselves that we typically say Shabbat Shalom, but we are, of course, thinking of Shabbat, which begins shortly, uh, and also praying for Shalom in our Shabbat as we move into the Torah portion called Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha, uh, go forth, go forward. It is the uh, official announcement from God to Abraham and to Sarah to leave their homeland and set out on a journey uh, to begin Judaism. And uh, this is the moment where God speaks to Abraham. He's not even Abraham yet, actually. Uh, his name is Abram and Sarah is Sarai. Their names get changed later in the Torah portion. And it's this moment where God speaks to, to them and they follow and they take those first steps to move towards the Jewish homeland, to move towards what will be uh, our um, our nation because of the first steps that Abraham and Sarah take for us uh, on the Shabbat. In their travels, uh, in their uh, in their caravan, if you will, of people traveling with them, uh, also is Lot, who is Abraham's nephew, traveling along with them on this journey. And the Torah portion in the middle part discusses that he... Uh, becomes a captive and he actually gets captured in the city of Sodom and the Torah portion this week talks about that and the irony and the pain is that we also think of captives for us this week this third Shabbat since the outbreak of the of the war known as Iron Swords between Israel and Hamas. We think of the captives. We think of those who are kidnapped and who are hostages. 224 of them, 224 women and children and men and elderly who are being held captive right now in Gaza. And so the idea of captives is very, very much and sadly very much on our minds as we enter this Shabbat together as a community. We are reminded in our Jewish tradition how important it is for us to discuss the freeing and the redeeming of captives. It's actually in our uh, our daily our daily prayers that we would do every single day as a Jewish community, and particularly from Rambam, from Moses Maimonides, from uh, our one of our teachers, he says uh, that redeeming captives is more important than providing for the poor and clothing them. And there is no greater mitzvah than redeeming captives, since the captive is in general the hungry the thirsty and the naked and is in danger of their lives and for their lives. And so Rambam reminds us that this mitzvah, this mitzvah of pidyon shvuim, this redeeming of captives is so important that it can in some, in some ways supersede. In fact, the Shulchan Aruch, another Jewish teaching, uh, that uh, more traditional Jews follow uh, in terms of their daily living. It says every moment that one delays unnecessarily, the ransoming of a captive is actually uh, so painful that it can be compared to bloodshed itself, the waiting process. And so we know, and we have been watching on the news, this waiting process for redeeming our captives and how challenging and how painful it is for all of us, how painful it is for uh, those families and how painful and challenging it is for uh, Israel, for
for the for the country of Israel to be able to navigate this very awful, awful, tragic moment for all of us. And so we are going to continue to pray for the release of our captives. We are uh, going to be thinking about them and understanding that the tradition and our tradition teaches us about the level of importance of redeeming those captives for us. And so on this Shabbat, I invite all of us not only to hold the ones that we love very tightly and appreciate the fact that we can sit around our Shabbat tables and be together. So I want us to think about that. I want us to think about the fact that, of course, so many of our brothers and sisters are unable to do that. And so perhaps you'd like to leave a seat empty at your Shabbat table tonight maybe away from the other seats to know that we are thinking and uh, thinking about all of those captives being held by Hamas right now. We're also taking part uh, as a wide Jewish community through something called the Blue Ribbon Campaign, which is placing a small blue ribbon uh, onto, onto your shirt. I have one uh, on, my, on my jacket. And also the discussion of the importance and connecting to and thinking about all those who are kidnapped. We are actually going to have on our website, cbiboka.org, uh, a landing page just devoted to uh, what's happening in Israel and how we can help. So just cbiboka.org, you'll see it sort of drop down from the top. And then if you, if you press right there, it'll give you a lot of options to connect to uh, ways to support Israel. And there is a page there that also uh, talks about uh, those who are um, those who are, are currently kidnapped and all of the fallen heroes uh, throughout these these uh, these weeks. So let's all hope for the return of these captives. Let's all also hope for a lot of Shalom in our Shabbat, our Shabbat service at 6.30. Uh, it is a pink Shabbat tonight, uh, a Shabbat that we're, uh, that we're partnering with Sharsheret, uh, Sharsheret, the uh, Jewish breast and ovarian uh, cancer community. And so we'll also ask you to come to services, not just with blue ribbons, if you have them, but also in pink, uh, because it is, it is pink Shabbat. So 6.30 and then tomorrow morning, uh, 8.30 uh, for our service and our Torah discussion, hoping to put some shalom into our Shabbat.